in a stunning turn of events, uh, something that I could have never imagined as a Lakers fan has happened. D'Angelo Russell has been traded to the Lakers and is coming back. I can't even believe it. I was in shock when I first saw the tweet from Shams saying that it was in the works and a possibility. I was stunned when the deal was finalized and I couldn't believe it as my friends kept texting me saying, hey, how you feeling right now? What do you think? Uh, because D'Angelo Russell, since he's come into the league, has been my favorite player in the league. It was great to have him on my favorite team. Watched him go to other teams and succeed. Uh, varying levels of success, but... I've always been a huge fan of his game, and to see him come back to the Lakers this year was unbelievable, and the move represented the Lakers finally doing something. They had been called on by fans, analysts, basically the teammates themselves, to make a trade, to get involved, and to try to do something to save the season. And what they did was not only a, a huge deal for me, just bringing back my favorite player, but... It's a it's a potentially season-saving move because they did not just bring back D'Angelo Russell. In a three-team trade, the Lakers are going to receive D'Angelo Russell, Jared Vanderbilt, and Malik Beasley, who will all reunite with their Timberwolves teammate from last season, Patrick Beverly. The Jazz will get Russell Westbrook, a top-four protected first-round pick from L.A., Juan Toscano Anderson, and Damian Jones, and the Wolves will get second-round picks Mike Conley and Nikhil Alexander-Walker. <sighs> I'm going to start with the Wolves and the Jazz first, because obviously the big part of, of this trade is the Lakers and what they received, but I'm surprised, specifically with the Jazz, I'm surprised that this is uh, all that they got, really. Danny Ainge loves his picks. He loves feeling like he's hustled a bunch of people and like pulled one over on teams. And I'm surprised that he parted with Malik Beasley and Jared Vanderbilt for one pick. That is top four protected anyways, and I believe it's 2027. So it's interesting to me that that would be enough and that other teams weren't calling about Malik Beasley and Jared Vanderbilt. Malik Beasley having a career year <laughs> shooting the three. And Vanderbilt is the type of energy, gritty, defensive-minded player that Teams basically need to have if they're going to... And Jared Vanderbilt's the kind of like gritty, defensive-minded, dirty, do-the-dirty-work type of player that teams are going to need on their bench to, to really make long, extended runs. So I'm surprised there wasn't more of a demand for them. So the Jazz, this is kind of an odd spot because they're, they're so well stockpiled with assets from the Gobert and Donovan Mitchell trades. But... This move is an odd one. They're still, like, floating around the mid-tier of the Western Conference. Like, too good to be a lottery team. Too bad to be, like, a firmly entrenched playoff team. So I don't know what the end game is here. The trade deadline is, uh, Thursday, is Thursday, is tomorrow. But who knows who else could be on the move for them. And for the Wolves, they obviously wanted a veteran point guard that could help with Rudy Gobert. Helps that Mike Conley has two years of experience playing with Rudy Gobert already. Played with a ball-dominant two-guard in Donovan Mitchell as well when he was in Utah. So, fitting in next to Gobert and Anthony Edwards should not be a problem. But I don't even really think that's what the Timberwolves are valuing. I think this is 100% a move to shore up the veteran presence in that locker room. When... The Timberwolves had all that success, won the playing game, made the playoffs last season. They had Patrick Beverly basically playing the role of the team vet, and that team adopted his attitude. For better or worse, I, I will let you form your own opinion on that. But that team was fun to watch because they all played hard. Lineups with Pat Bev, D'Lo, Malik Beasley, Catton, Edwards had like a top five efficiency in the, in the NBA, like a top five offensive efficiency. I think they were top 10 defense as well. Like simply put, they were out there as one of the top fives in the entire league. And they, you know, went a different way this summer when they kind of just blew that up to bring in Rudy Gobert. And now they're kind of having to readjust to everything on the fly. It's been definitely not the type of year that they've wanted. And to part with D'Lo is is an interesting spot it's you bring in mike conley who does know how to facilitate an offense but d'lo had kind of really been a, a huge a huge saving i didn't I, anchor sounds bad but like he's been a huge part 
of this team's success post Cat going out with an injury. It's been Anthony Edwards and D'Lo basically carrying every night. Nas Reed occasionally good games. Uh, you have some other role players that have been stepping up big in, in certain moments, but those two have been the steadying force. So now, with no real timetable still on Cat's return, a lot of this is going to fall on Anthony Edwards and Rudy Gobert. And a, a lot has already been made about the two of them potentially not getting along uh, in the locker room or on court or any of that. So we'll see what happens with that. But obviously, the big news here, the Lakers, they retool. They turn one first-round pick and Russell Westbrook and Damian Jones and Juan Toscano Anderson into three viable players for them that are going to add much-needed depth, much-needed toughness, and uh, most importantly is outside shooting. D'Lo is a point guard who cannot be left open from three. That is something that the Lakers have sorely lacked running their lineups with Pat Bev and Russell Westbrook. And Malik Beasley is shooting, like I said, a career year from three. I believe I read something that said Malik Beasley and D'Angelo Russell, if they like finished the season shooting what they're currently shooting, both would still be career highs for Westbrook. Like They're shooting far and away better than Russell Westbrook from two, from three. The efficiency is a lot higher, and they're just t taking more anyway, so the volume is higher. They're a bigger threat. And that's something that LeBron, uh, really a LeBron-centric team, should have had this whole time. Part of the key to the bubble title was how many spot-up shooters that the team had that could just space out the floor and give Anthony Davis and LeBron James room to work inside, but also outlets to kick it to in corners, on the wings, at the top. And this goes a long way to helping that. And I think Jared Vanderbilt is going to be the type of energy guy that can come in if, say, someone's out for a game or two, or they need someone who, someone's in foul trouble or something. He's going to come in at that four and five spots, and he's going to be able to bring an immediate edge to that lineup, whatever that lineup is. Not to mention, like I said, the consistency of Pape, of D'Lo, Malik Beasley, and Vanderbilt, and the chemistry that they had. Now you're going to be running lineups that they did in Minnesota to so much success last year. But instead of Anthony Edwards and Carl Anthony Towns, it's Anthony Davis and LeBron James, which I think is a bit of a step up. I think that's a huge upgrade in personnel. And I shouldn't say huge because I do like both of those guys a lot, but this is a great move. I don't think the Lakers are done yet either, but the fact that they were able to do this with one pick and, and Westbrook as the centerpieces of the deal blows my mind. I need to go delete every bad thing I said about Rob Palenka over the last year or two. This was an unbelievable first move. I, even if this is the only move, I'm going to be ecstatic that, that this is what the result was and that this is what the team looks like now, especially with Rui Hachimura fitting in basically immediately too after getting acquired from the Wizards last week. Like, this is a new look roster in two moves that has exponentially raised its ceiling. Uh, so I'm very excited on this one. We'll see what else happens with the trade deadline. Um, it, it is tomorrow at, I think, 1 p.m. Eastern time, like 10 a.m. our time. Or it might be 1 p.m. West Coast time, 4 o'clock Eastern. I'm not sure. Either way, we'll see what else happens. I will be back to cover that. But more importantly, Lakers fans, how are you feeling? Let me know in the comments section if you were excited about these trades, this new look lineup, who you think the team should go after now before the deadline, if anyone. Let me know all your thoughts. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you soon.